Club. This will be the reading for Virgo for the end of June through the whole month of July. Um, I've already pulled your emotional energy and we're going to get into the tarot. We're going to do um, career and finances and then love and then spiritual growth and see how you're doing. Okay, so let's get right into this. Uh, first of all, with your emotional energy, it seems like maybe you're a little confused, but excited. Um, you've got, okay, so you're going with the ebb and the flow. You're kind of just chilling, going with whatever happens. And that's all fine and good and cool. And then there's some movement and you're seeing new beginnings for yourself and then you're being very reflective about all of what you've been through and where you're going the energy that you're in right now um you're really being reflective about that and you're really taking a whole new look at it like a new perspective um yeah, on everything. You're just really taking a whole new perspective on everything. You're seeing it through a new lens, it seems. And um, then you've got the rainbow card, which is about blessings. So you're really thinking about all of the things that you're grateful for. And that's really beautiful. Um, you're really, really... Uh, thankful for all of your blessings that you have in your life but at the same time you're also feeling vulnerable for some reason and you know so you're kind of in your own head out in nature by yourself maybe taking walks um just kind of hanging out really reflecting and being thankful but also feeling vulnerable but you do have new beginnings and you're excited about that you're excited that there's some type of movement happening now um and so i pulled an extra card for you on that and the next card that i got was the waterfall which means effortlessness so I just want you to know that, um, you know, whatever these new, whatever these new beginnings are, Mercury retrograde has to be really jacked up. My mouth is crazy. Um, but yeah, whatever your, um, new beginnings are that you're really excited about, even though you're reflecting and you're feeling vulnerable, um, soon all of that's going to become very effortless for you so just hang in there and just keep being hopeful for your future okay all right now let's get into your tarot this card really wants to come out justice So you've got the hangman card first, which is, in this tarot, is the awakening of something. And again, that goes back to, you know, perspective. You're seeing something in your career finances in a whole new way. And then you've got the justice card. And then next you have the, um, the ten of swords. Let me put my glasses on. You've got the ten of swords next. So we'll go over the, all that in just a minute. As soon as I get all of your cards pulled, this next row will be your love life. Need two more cards, please, for Virgo's love life for the end of June through July of 2021.
So you've got the King of Cups, the Ten of Cups, and Strength card for your love life. That's really good. And then this is for your spiritual growth. That over. Make room here. There we go. All right, so you got four cards for spiritual growth. You've got the Two of Swords, the Hermit, Temperance, or Balance. And then you've got the Knight of Wands. And on the bottom of the deck is the World. Excuse me. Okay, so for your career, your finances, it looks like to me you're, again, reflecting, just like the emotional cards say. You're reflecting. You're gaining insight, new perspective. Um, you're having some kind of an awakening where things are being looked at in a whole new way light for you you're um, really starting to embrace your uniqueness um, of course you're quite um, helpful to other people I want to say charitable but that's not really the word I want to use you you just contribute your energy and your effort to um, helping other people, maybe loved ones or uh, friends that are in need or something. You're just you're very good at being there for people. And um, you're being objective. You're being impartial. But you're also standing up for what you believe in. And you're trying to see all sides of the situation with this card, the Justice card. So I'm feeling like um, maybe you're looking at uh, the place that you work right now. Is this really where you want to be? Um, maybe you've got some kind of court date coming up. Perhaps you've got some kind of decision to make on a new job offer. Um, whatever this is for you, as long as you come from a place of integrity, um, you're going to come out on top. So just be sure that you keep yourself firmly seated in integrity, whatever this is. Um, don't take that job because it's more money because the job might suck, you know, um, like, don't go to court and shoot your mouth off because you might end up in a lot of trouble. So, just do things with integrity. Do things wisely. Choose wisely. But then the um, third card that you have for career and finance is the ending of a situation and relief, of, relief from it. I mean, your bags are packed. You're ready to walk through the door and be done. Walk out the door. So... You're feeling like some kind of big weight is getting ready to be lifted off of your shoulders. And maybe you're a little melodramatic about it. But um, 
like you really feel like you should be and that it's worthy of that. So, you know, just go with you. Just embrace you, who you are. I mean, this first card even says, you know, you being in the hangman, you're looking at things reflectively and, and gaining insight into yourself and um, really starting to embrace your uniqueness. So, yeah, to be a little melodramatic about it is perfectly fine for you, Virgo. <laughs> it's perfectly normal. And then um, the next row is your love cards. And so you've got the King of Cups, the Ten of Cups, and Strength. And, of course, we all know, or most of us know anyway, that um, to be the King of Cups is a trustworthy and honorable position to be in. So either this is your energy or um, somebody that you're looking at, someone that you're involved with somehow, you know, romantically. Um, this card says that the situation that you're in is safe and that it's a, a solid romantic relationship. And, um, you know, he's sitting on the helm of the boat there. Just cool as he can be, right? And so with this card, you're also being told that um, even if there's hidden emotions, that they're well-intentioned emotions. And um, that your person, whoever you're involved with, is very um, giving. So, you know, it's, it's, trust, it's trustworthy. It is a devoted type of relationship. Um, I feel like you're cautious, but again, like back to this ebb and flow, you're kind of still just going with it regardless. You're just rolling with it and seeing, you know, where it takes you. Um, so, and ironically, um, this has popped in my head. Maybe some of you who are in a relationship with this very um, trustworthy partner are actually going through some kind of marriage counseling or, um, you know, some type of counseling sessions together. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be marriage counseling because it doesn't look really that much like there's so much trouble here except that there is the strength card. So if you're seeing a counselor, I think that these cards are telling you with the 10 of cups and the strength to hang in there, that you're gonna get your happy ending. It's gonna work out, okay? You and your partner both really wanna work together and make sure this is gonna stay together and, and you're not gonna end up breaking up over it, you know? So hang in there and um, don't give up because this is really good energy for you. Um, the Ten of Cups is about emotional contentment. You know, it's the best card in the tarot deck. So if you are in a little bit of choppy waters, you know, with your King of Cups, male or female, hang in there because it's going to be okay. Now, if you're in, um, if there are no problems in your relationship or it's a new relationship and you're just now seeing where this is going, it is going to lead to your happily ever after, but you're going to have to have strength to get there. And I don't feel like that's because it's a struggle necessarily. <coughs> Damn it. I feel like it's more because um, maybe some little things have happened here and there that made you a little cautious, but it's going to, it's going to all balance out because you've got that 10 of cups. So, um, whoever it is that you're in the relationship with, even if it's new, it looks like it's going to balance out, you know, it's going to be okay and better than okay because the 10 of cups, like I said, is the very best card in the whole deck. I mean, 
it's the card of all cards to get. This is the one you want, especially when you're talking about a relationship. So hang in there and be resilient and uh, realize that you're stronger than you knew you were. You know, that's what the lion represents. And yes, it's Leo energy, but I don't like to do all of that guessing with what sign you might be having something to do with necessarily. Um, I mean, you know, water sign, that's Cancerian and Pisces and Scorpio. But those are hit and miss energies to, to do that. I think, for me anyway, I like to just go with more of what the meaning of the card is or how it's falling with other cards more than try to guess, you know, who you're people are that we're talking about so I think just have the strength of the lion and um, be compassionate and if there's forgiveness to be given then you know by all means give the forgiveness because this is beautiful energy and whoever you are with is trustworthy and honorable and they might be hiding their emotions right now but they're well-intended emotions. It, it's not um, malicious. It's not somebody trying to, you know, screw you over or just get the cookie and run, right? You know, it's someone with um, honorable intentions. Okay, so moving on to your spiritual growth. We have the Two of Swords, the Hermit, temperance or balance and then uh, the knight of wands so um, you're trying to make decisions about different things in life and again that goes back to perspective and reflection and being in the hangman um, and even the, um, the temperance card here you're weighing it all out you're really looking at yourself um, really starting to love yourself and the things about you that you never embraced before. Um, looking at the old you, looking at people in your life and do they serve you? Do they not serve you? You know, are they bringing you joy or are you just bringing them joy? So you're looking at a lot of stuff like that, making decisions, making very good, healthy and intelligent wise patience patient decisions with ebb and flow you know um you're feeling a little vulnerable that explains that well and even the relationship well hell even your career i mean it, it's like you've kind of maybe because of your awakening everything's being juggled up into the air now you're really just rethinking everything your position in, in your work um who you want to be with you know, maybe you're finally ready to settle down and find that soulmate. Whereas before you had kind of player energy, you know, just want to have fun. Right. So, and it's all good. It's okay. I'm not judging. But yeah, with the hermit, um, like you've really been reflecting inwardly and meaningfully. You know, you've taken those walks. With the vulnerability card you, you're taking those walks in nature you're um really starting to be in solitude within yourself and think about yourself and um so the temperance card the balance card is bringing all of that into balance blending the new you with the parts of who you already were that you want to keep so you're finding that new balance right you're and, and again, that's an ebb and a flow because you're kind of, you're like pulling in some things from who you've always been and discarding the rest and you're pulling in new energy for who you're becoming and growing into, you know, and integrating that with who you like about you or what rather what you like about you, right? So then um, the last card for spiritual growth is the knight of wands and this is a card of action this is like confidence and passion and um you know being charming and charismatic uh, restless even 
ready to just like do it, ready to do something about it. Uh, like hurrying and getting rid of all that past energy and clearing it all out so that your six degrees can just feel calm and safe and, you know, maybe not vulnerable anymore. Maybe that's what it is that you're feeling so vulnerable about is these people that are in your life that, you know, you view them differently now and they're viewing you differently because you're changing and growing spiritually. And so your energies aren't blending anymore, which is perfectly normal, actually. Um, it happens to all of us when we start really having a, a well, not just one spiritual awakening, but anytime we have a, another faction of that, because it never really stops. You continue to grow and develop, right? So with each new phase of it, um, there tends to be more things or people that fall away to improve and grow. Um, because those energies just don't match anymore. So that's okay. And um, yeah, I mean, like it says, literally says on the card, events that require immediate action. So maybe some of the immediate action is to get away from these people that are in your six degrees that their energy doesn't blend anymore. Perhaps the job that you have um, doesn't fulfill you anymore or the people that you work with, their energy doesn't mesh with yours anymore. You know, they're still vibrating at a different level, whereas you've ascended a bit. And so it just doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel good anymore. You know, um, that's not to put them down. It's not to try to make you feel more egotistical because, you know, ego should only be healthy, of course. But, um, you know, it's just a fact of soul growth that sometimes it starts to feel uncomfortable around people that we once really loved being around or in a job that we once really loved doing even. So um, totally understandable energy going on here. And you're very passionate about what's going on in your, in your life, in your changes. You're really quite excited about it, which is great. It's really beautiful. And, um, you know, with the world card on the bottom, it's like spirits telling you, you can't go wrong here. You're going to be brilliant and successful at this. And that um, it's time for you to grow spiritually. And it's a time of uh, joyful accomplishment even, you know. So there's going to be like this newfound freedom for you. Um to run with and play with. And so I would be, my advice to you would be, you know, be very happy, be very proud of that. And just sit in that power for a while, you know, just sit in the seat of being proud of who you are and how far you've come and all of the wonderful things that are ahead of you, because the more thankful you are with the blessings card. Okay. That's doing your daily gratitude. The more grateful you are, and the more uh, often that you're happy and joyful inside of your being, the quicker and the faster the universe will deliver to you all of the abundance that you truly deserve. And so just stay in that energy of thankfulness and gratitude and joy and happiness and really counting your blessings and um, being excited and passionate and strong in your endeavors because it is all going to pay off for you. It really will. And so I don't really know uh, that I need to, I don't need any clarity on any of this. It's very clear, but I am going to pull some of the um, love angel oracle cards for you since this was a little bit vague. I mean, it was good news because you just need to hang in there. It's going to be beautiful for you, but maybe we can get a little more insight from the love oracle. Actually, I will try to pull you some clarity on this uh, job thing. Because I really feel like for most of you, this is job and not court. But maybe it's court for some. Maybe it's both for some. Hell, I don't know. But... 
I feel like I need to pull clarity on it for you too. Can we get a love card, please? Wow. Okay. <sighs> Romantic feelings. Your feelings are real and worth exploring. Well, that's exciting. Okay, I don't think that meant to come out. Healing family issues. Your love life benefits as you forgive your parents. Okay, so maybe for some of you, um, there's some kind of issue with your parents, some kind of... Um, pain from your childhood or something that you still need to work on and release in order to have a successful relationship here. And then on the bottom of the deck, you have, this could be the one you've already met the romantic partner that you seek. So yeah, I would say that whatever these little issues are, maybe it has something to do with healing uh, some kind of trauma or emotional scarring within you from your childhood. And that's not unusual. Um, that's actually quite common. I feel like I'm saying um too much. But anyway, it's, it's quite common for that to be a factor in um, relationships or jobs. So do a little soul searching on that. Uh, focus your reflection and your perspective toward your childhood. Go all the way back to your childhood and really think about how certain situations, you know, made you feel or whatever. Do I have all of these upside down? I do. Okay, so let's pull some clarity on your career and finances. You got the sun card and the six of swords. Yeah, you're planning on making a move. And the emperor, you're bossing up. You've either gotten a new job offer or you're just determined. Yeah, you're the king of swords. You're cutting through the crap. Out with the old, in with the new. You are bossing up as the emperor. You're tired of the struggle of the everyday grind and you are moving toward something much better, much, much better for you. All right, now let's get some clarity here with your spiritual growth. Well, got three cards here. Okay, so sensitivity, you're becoming more sensitive and you need to make changes accordingly, which goes along with your balance and your crossroads, your two of swords. Um, love and light, your purpose is to bring divine healing light and love to this world. And then writing, you heal, inspire, teach, and entertain with the words that you write. So... Okay, with well that, I don't know if you're uh, used to writing or not, but I'm going to advise that you start writing, even if you don't already do that. For one thing, writing is very good therapy. You can write out all of your issues, even all the way back to your childhood. Write it down on paper, and it helps to release it from you. Not to mention that writing a word or speaking a word is a vibration. And so you're removing those vibrations from your body, which have emotional attachment to them. So writing is a very healthy, uh, like mindful meditation to do. Also keep a journal beside your bed. And when you wake up first thing in the morning, try to write down anything that you could have possibly dreamt about the night before 
don't look at it, don't worry about it, just write it down. Then maybe, you know, two or three days later, a week later, come back and look at everything you've written down every morning when you first get up, because that's when you're going to remember your dreams the most, is when you first wake up. That's also when you're, you're going to be the most connected to spirit is first thing in the morning. And the last thing at night, when you're falling asleep and going into the dream state. Those are the two times that you are the easy, the most easily attached to spirit, connected to spirit. So, um, when you first wake up, you've still got one foot in the, in the spirit world, in the dream world, where we learn lessons and we work out issues. So, rem try to remember those dreams and write them down. Go back and look at them later. And you can kind of sort of self-help, self-analyze yourself with, what you're writing down about what you're dreaming even if it's just an image if you simply remember an image of something write down whatever that was if you can't think of what it's called draw a picture you know just a way to get it out of your mind and onto the paper before it goes poof and you don't remember anymore so writing is very important and maybe even for a career maybe that's what the change of the career is you become a writer or maybe you've been a writer and you dabbled in it Perhaps you write music, um, poetry, kids' books, who knows? You know, you do something with writing, which is a type of spell casting. It's putting a vibration out there. So since this is in your spiritual row, I'm going to remind you that it should be things that are of a higher vibration. Don't write scary stories, yada, yada, unless it's got a happy ending, you know, because vibratory, right? I mean, it, it puts that energy out into the world. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Now we're going to pull a few 111 cards for you and a rune, and we'll wrap this up. Remember you are magical, and remember that we are who we've been waiting for. You've come a long way and you need to acknowledge that. You are the scales, so find your balance. You teach best what you most need to learn. Be in gratitude. Self-love first this time. Self-love first this time. Stop making excuses. And open up to love. Hmm. Interesting. All right. So now we're going to grab a rune. <coughs> <coughs> and I've got to get rid of this stupid cough. What we got? That's a cool stone. It's a green stone. <sighs> okay. That rune is possessions. Possessions, nourishment, and cattle are the words most used with this rune. It's called Fihu. It's a rune of fulfillment, ambition, ambition satisfied, love shared, Rewards received. It promises nourishment from the most worldly to the sacred and the divine. For if the ancient principle, as above, so below, holds true, then we are also here to nourish God. This rune calls for a deep probing of the meaning of profit and gain in your life. Look with care to know whether it is wealth and possessions you require for your well being, or rather, self rule and the growth of a will. Another concern of Fihu is to conserve what has already been gained. 
This rune urges vigilance and continual mindfulness, especially in times of good fortune, for it is then that you are likely to collapse yourself into your success on the one hand or behave recklessly on the other. Enjoy your good fortune and remember to share it, for the mark of the well-nourished self is the ability and willingness to nourish the self. Mm -hmm. I love that. Because it fits perfectly with how you're not just in the hangman, but that could also mean that you are um, like a charitable person. You're very uh, giving to your loved ones and your friends. You're very helpful. You give up your time, your finances, whatever you have going on. And, um, you know, since this was in the finance row, I really think that's what it meant. And then you know, being reflective and, and keeping the balance. And then you've got, you know, you are the scales. Find your balance. Don't forget your gratitude. Um, this one, keep this one in mind. Stop making excuses. That means something to someone. So keep that in mind. Self-love first. Remember that this time. Be open to love. And remember that you're magical. And remember that we are who we've been waiting for. Okay? All right, Virgo. I hope this resonated with you. I hope you like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Um, I will be doing courses soon to teach people how to truly love their self again. They are totally by donation only. I'm going to offer them in three different categories, one-on-one, -on -one, round table classroom discussion, or just a simple video package. If you're interested in that, subscribe to my channel and follow the links that will be in the description below so that you can keep up to date with when those begin. It's going to be in about two weeks, like right after 4th of July. But if you want to um, get involved in those. Keep keep up to date with it by watching my channel, okay? And the uh, second course I'm going to offer is going to be on understanding uh, energy and what to do with it. So if you're interested in the spiritual growth, if you need a personal reading, if you just want to reach out to me by email, that also will be in the link below. I'm very accessible to everyone. I do not charge for my knowledge. I am completely doing this on donations alone um, because I am in service to you to make sure that we all are unshackled and not enslaved any further this Mercury retrograde and freedom, true freedom. I, I just want to empower you all again. So if you would like to check out my information, please go to my channel, read the description below. Thank you very much. Many blessings, love and light. See you soon.